Hello world, Shelly here, and it's time for your Friday Foundation Fix, where you can get your fix of foundation reviews in between foundation fests. And today I've got the much-requested Giorgio Armani Power Fabric Foundation. This retails for $64 for one fluid ounce of product, comes in 30 shades. I used Sephora Shade Finder to decide my shade. I put in the Estee Lauder 1C1 Cool Bone Double Wear, and it recommended that I choose shade 3.5, which is what I've got here described as for fair skin with neutral undertone. This is an SPF 25 foundation. It has a chemical sunscreen and it's described as a liquid foundation that provides full coverage with a velvet matte, lightweight, second skin finish. And it's meant for combo and oily skin. I've got normal to dry skin but I've had so many recommendations of people with dry skin saying that this would work for me that I cannot resist, I'm going to try it. The description here says that Armani Beauty's microfill technology provides powerful ultrafine pigments shaped for the highest coverage foundation with the thinnest and lightest texture. This allows a little to go a long way. This is currently getting 4.1 out of 5 stars on Sephora's website with almost 700 reviews. They recommend applying it with a sponge not a sponge, a brush, and that is the only way they recommend. They also say if you want to build it up, you can tap in additional coverage with fingertips. This did win the Allure Best of Beauty Award for 2018, so let's take a look at shade 3.5, swatched against a few others in my collection. Let's swatch. First up is today's foundation, the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric in shade 3.5. Second, I've got the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place in 1C1 Cool Bone. This is what the Sephora Shade Finder thought would be a shade match for the Armani. I would say the Armani is about one shade darker. Similar undertones, though. Third up, I've got the MAC Studio Sculpt in shade NW15. Fourth is the Too Faced Born This Way in Snow. And last up, I've got the Cover FX Natural Finish in shade P20. I am starting out with a 44-year-old face. I've got some sun damage I like to cover, deeper smile lines, forehead lines, large pores, texture between my eyebrows, and as a bonus challenge, <laughs> my skin is really peely, especially right here, and a little bit down on my chin, and a little bit on my nose. I... As you know, I've recently moved and I found the box that had my acids in it. So I had not been acid toning for probably six weeks. So now that I've reintroduced that, the exfoliation and oh, I needed exfoliation so badly. I'm so glad they're back in my life, but I'm peeling a little bit. So this is going to have a serious challenge up against, you know, you, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta put them to the test. I've already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened my face. I primed with the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer, which does help a lot to sort of smooth out when I've got peelies going on and also gives a nice, I just really love the base of this primer. Nice tacky sort of base. Feels like it holds on to foundation really well. I will go on one side of my face with a sponge. This is the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. On the other side, I've got a brush. I will use the Sigma F80. We'll see if there is a preference one way or the other. For packaging, we have a frosted glass bottle with a pump. This is blending out really easily with the sponge. I know the website says brush, 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 but I really feel like this is a very nice, nice light coverage look blended out with the sponge. I think I'm getting pretty good redness reduction from one side to the other. It is looking nice and skin-like, but covering my sunspots fairly well. So light coverage, but I think if you like the sponge, that looks just fine to me. Coverage is maybe a little bit better with the brush, but I would say it looks nice either way. I do right now prefer the sponge side, but I think the brush also is sort of kicking up some of my flakes. And let's use, since I said a little went a long way, I did not use anywhere near all of that product. So let's take the sponge and try and just build up coverage in the areas where 
I need just a little bit more. This does build up nicely and as is, I would say that this is not going to get to what I would call full coverage. I can still see my deepest sunspots poking through. I would say that we are at a high medium coverage at this point. I still see just a little bit of things poking through that full coverage to me is, you know, I don't see any of that coming through. Now, in terms of how it's handling my flaking areas, I think basically nothing's going to make those go away. That's not what I was expecting with this foundation. What I was hoping was that it will sort of not accentuate them so I can still get some coverage. Yes, you're going to see that my skin is flaking, but it's, it's not calling attention to it. And I think that's pretty much what we've got going on. I can still see my flakes, but the, the little peely areas, but it's, it's not drawing attention to them. It's not really doing that thing where it like only grabs that skin and then doesn't cover everything else. I think it's, it's doing a fairly good job for, you know, I would say this is best case scenario of what I was anticipating. So that is pretty, pretty good. Does not appear to be settling into lines, does not appear to be settling into pores. So, so far so good. I'm okay with this. Check the time. Let's call the check-in time 2.15. I'm going to go put the rest of my makeup on. I'll be right back. Going well so far with the Power Fabric. I had no trouble blending concealer into the foundation. I'm wearing the MAC Studio Fix 24-hour wear smooth wear concealer. And I did not end up setting this with powder. It set itself down very nicely. Did not seem to have any trouble there. So, so far so good. On the rest of my face, I've got the Natasha Denona Bloom palette, the Natasha Denona Super Glow, and come on now. When you can wear a highlight on peeling skin and it still looks beautiful, that is a doggone good highlight. Mm-hmm. 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 Bronzer is just a little bit of the Balm Desert. I am wearing the Pat McGrath Mothership Mini Mothership Subliminal in Platinum Bronze as my eyeshadow because I was like, let's take it light and easy today. And then this happened. My mascara is the Hourglass Caution on the upper lashes and the Estee Lauder Zero Smudge. On my lower lashes and my lip is the Pat McGrath Lust Gloss, love these things in Flesh Fantasy. So that is where we are starting out. I'll be back in a bit with a daylight check-in, then I'll come back at the end of the night, give you guys my final thoughts. Hey there, it's about 7 p.m. Let's take a look at how the power fabric is holding up. So far, so good. I think it's very comfortable, very, very, very lightweight. Really feels like nothing at all. I do think the shade, you know, here's my arm for comparison, is... A little bit too dark. The fact that this is considered their fair is uh, pretty dark, I think. A couple, couple, two, three shades too dark for what I would think, what I would call fair, but so far, comfortable. Let's see how much the camera can pick up. Not major loss of coverage, though. I see a little red coming through on my cheeks, but... Otherwise looks good and I think at a distance you can't even see my peelies. So that's pretty remarkable. I'll be back tonight with my final thoughts. 12, 11 a.m. That puts us just about at the 11 hour mark. Let's take a look at how the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric Foundation has held up. I would say it's very comfortable to wear exceptionally lightweight, feels like nothing on the skin, very much nothing, wonderfully lightweight. I don't think this is drying. I, I know it said that it was not for dry skin, it was more on the normal combo side of the fence, oily side of the fence, but I don't feel like my skin has dried out at all. So that may be why so many of you have recommended that I try this, even though I would never have touched it based on them 
basically claiming that it's best for the opposite kind of skin than mine. Uh, so I don't think it's drying. I think that's great news for those of us with dry skin that want a matte finish. I will say, I think it's a little bit more dewy at the end of the night than it was when we started. I just feel like I've got a little bit more reflect on my chin, my nose, my forehead, you know, aside from the gorgeous Natasha Denona highlight. But I like that. I think it looks nice. I think it has worn down very gracefully, but it's almost gone. So as far as the long wear claim, this does not wear anywhere near as long as I would expect for something that claims to be long wear. Let's take a look. So coverage is pretty much gone on my chin. Product has started to sort of bunch up on my chin and around my mouth and a little bit around my nose is just flat out missing. Even the areas, you know, my, my cheek areas, the side of my face where I don't have any peeling, I feel like, you know, the coverage has just kind of disappeared. The peeling parts of my cheek are, you can still see the outlines of where the foundation is along those peels, but I would say if this was drying, those peels would be lifting away from my skin and they're not. And I would say that the coverage is still not accentuating them, which is pretty amazing, I think. The area between my brows and up on my forehead, I think, is a little more peely than it was when we started out. And it it's visible, but I didn't expect it not to be. My forehead looks just like coverage has vanished. You know, that's about it. I just feel like... This is kind of evaporated into thin air on most of my face, which is fine. If it's going to degrade, I would like it to degrade gracefully. I would like it to degrade evenly, gracefully, not a lot of blotchiness. Up close, I do think, you know, my chin looks pretty bad. It looks kind of like gunky and a little bit, you know, not so graceful. But for the most part, I would say this has degraded gracefully. I just wish it had not degraded this much at this point in the evening. So in terms of dry skin, I think you're okay with this. In terms of maturing skin, I don't think this settled into my fine lines. So my crow's feet, my smile lines, my forehead, but it did settle into my deepest chin line here. So possibly deeper wrinkles could be a problem, but fine lines do not seem to give it too much trouble. So if I had to give a grade to the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric, I think this is a solid B. I'm going to give this a solid, solid B with the caveat that I look forward to trying it when I don't have peeling skin and we will see if it performs any differently. I, it doesn't have quite as much coverage as I expected and the coverage disappeared pretty quickly. I wish they had some lighter shades. This is pretty far on the fair end of the spectrum and it's pretty dark, but those are the, those are what's keeping it out of the A range for me. We'll see. I'll continue to play around with it. I will keep you guys posted in a future foundation follow-up if anything changes. And we're going to call it a B. So there you go. Giorgio Armani's Power Fabric gets a B for dry and maturing skin. And this is another Friday foundation fix in the books. Let me know down in the comments below what you would like me to check out next. If you want to know what I have already reviewed, check out my website, geekoutofwater.com. Click the Foundation Fest link that will take you to a ranked, sortable, searchable spreadsheet of all of the foundation reviews that I have posted, of which there are more than 120 at this point. Give me a minute to get this one up. I don't like to put any spoilers up, so I will have this posted shortly. It will be added to the list, and let me know. What do you guys want to see? Let's chat. Comments down below. As always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. Come back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time for new videos. I appreciate your time, and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.